in previous video we have understand the product of ammonia and we have just started the nitric acid if you have missed that video you can find it in the i button on the top of this now having said that let us just quickly discuss the chemical reaction that are taking place in this production of nitric acid but before discussing this i would like to suggest you that check out the last video in which we have discuss the properties of nitric acid and what are the raw materials that are going to need in order to manufacture this nitric acid and then further follow this chemical reactions so now you can see here that this production of nitric acid involve three steps of the chemical reaction the first one is your ammonia oxidation reaction which is again your major reaction and then there is a side reaction which also take place and lastly we will see that how do we can convert this oxidized form of the ammonia into nitric acid so let's understand the first reaction of the oxidation of your ammonia so in which what we are going to do is we will try to oxidize our ammonia so let me just take a pen here you can see that we have taken your ammonia and reacting it with the oxygen present in the air so we will supply ammonia and air and react together in order to produce in order to produce product of no right so you can see here as we are producing no and half mole of the water is also being liberated again this reaction is very much exothermic and and it liberate heat around minus 54.0 kilo calories right so this reaction again further undergo the reaction and produces NO2 with the excess of oxygen as you can see here so combinedly we can directly represent this reaction as ammonia reacting with oxygen in order to produce nitrogen dioxide as NO2 right so this is the oxidation of the ammonia in which we react ammonia with excess of oxygen in order to produce two moles of NO2 but again this is re this reaction is exothermic as well and it produces heat around 27.2 kilo calories this minus sign over here represent that this reaction is the exothermic reaction now moving to the side reaction which are not that much important for the exam point of view these are your side reactions right in which ammonia react with oxygen and it produces nitrogen and water but this side reaction are at very minor quantity or they are very tiny then this ammonia is also produce nitrogen and hydrogen in the reversible reaction that is opposite to the hub reaction that we have understand in the previous videos so you can see here that this is the same reaction where we used to produce ammonia so here ammonia decomposes into nitrogen and hydrogen right then the fourth side reaction is your ammonia and oxygen which produces n2o right half mole of n2o and remaining water is being produced and last reaction is this in which ammonia is reacted with the product no in order to produce nitrogen and water molecules so these are the side reaction that are taking place in the reaction of the ammonia but our major reaction is this oxidation of the ammonia now let's just move to the third reaction in which we are going to produce this this nitric acid from the nitrous oxide right so this was we are having that we are produced no2 in the oxidation step right this is we have already produced in the previous slide as this reaction right so now you can see here that this nitric acid is being now reacted with the water or we can say that this this no2 is absorbed in the water right in order to produce two mole of the nitric acid and which is the aqueous solution and again this reaction is the exothermic reaction with the heat of 32.2 kilo calories so by this reaction we can say that our main product is being produced this reaction is the main reaction in which we take this nitrous oxide or we can say no2 in order to produce nitric acid with the help of absorption in the water then again this no2 can be reversibly produced and to o4 as well but again this all are the side reaction that we are not going to focus then this reaction can also be happened where it will produce nitric acid and one mole 
of the HNO2 gas as well, right? Then this HNO2 gas again decomposes in water, NO and nitrogen dioxide. So these are the all chemical reactions that involved in this process. You can see here, if you remember all this reaction, it will be very, very much beneficial to draw the flow sheet and to understand the process description for the production of the nitric acid. As this production of nitric acid is again very much complicated and its flow sheet is again very complex. So I want you to focus on the chemical reaction which is the backbone for the flow sheet and the process description. So again there is a three main reaction. In the first reaction we react our ammonia with the water in order to produce NO2. And the second reaction is your all side reaction which we do not need to focus. And then the third reaction in which we and we absorb this product NO2 into the water and in order to produce nitric acid that your HNO3 right this reaction is your main reaction. Now all of the reaction are again very much exothermic reaction and they will liberate large amount of heat. So now having said that let's just quickly move to the flow sheet. And again I want you to focus on the screen that this process flow sheet is very complicated. You can see here we are using ammonia as the raw material and we are taking it from the storage spherical tank that we have understood in the previous video. And now this ammonia combined with the compressed air to facilitate the oxygen requirement and we will oxidize this ammonia. So here you can see that we are using air and we are using one compressor in order to compress this air. So we will have more amount of the oxygen that can be used for the oxidation purpose of the nitrogen of the ammonia. So here you can see that the composition of the reactant as 10 percentage by volume of the ammonia and 90 percentage of the air by volume. So 3.5 atmosphere pressure is also being maintained with this compressor right. Now this reactant you can see here both the reactant are now directly sent to the specially designed converter or we can say reactor. Now this reactor is being specially designed to serve three purposes. As you can see here this at the top section it, it serves for the purpose of the converter. In the middle section it serves the purpose of superheater and in the bottom part it serves as the heat recovery boiler. So as we know that this is the highly exothermic reaction. So when this two reactant will react it they will produce large amount of heat. So essentially this converter is your shell and tube type of the heat exchanger. In the tube side we provide platinum based catalyst to enhance this react of the reaction. And our reaction is also take place inside the tubes. And then heat of reaction is being liberated to the cell side. So the cell side we pass our water. As you can see that from bottom of the section we will pass water. So as this water will receive heat of this exothermic reaction it will be converted into the steam. So we can say that we are utilizing this heat of reaction to produce steam and this steam is then sent back to the turbine section. As you can see here, as you can see here that steam from the superheated section of the selective heat exchanger that is your cell side will pass like this and it will be directly sent to the turbine section here. Now as this turbine will be rotated with the help of the product steam and it will run the compressor. So we can say that we do not require any external source of energy to run our compressor. As this compressor will be run with the help of steam that is being generated from this reactor right. So this is the one of we can say that is the heart of the entire process as this serves different purpose. It is converting our reactor into the product stream but not only that it is also served as the heat recovery boiler as well because it convert this water into the steam and that steam then later utilized to run the turbine and to run our compressor. Now moving towards the next point that the product stream coming out of the tube side is now is now sent to the catalyst recovery section where we recover our precious catalyst that is your platinum based rhodium catalyst and we try to recover majority of the catalyst. Then further it is sent to the steam economy where we utilize where we further utilize our heat of the reaction to convert water into the steam right 
and now here you can see that we are passing our condensate water or the makeup water and directly sent to the heat recovery section and this water later convert into the vapor and again pass to the turbine to to rotate our compressor so this is the one entire cycle of the water stream that is operating in the secondary stage to produce steam out of the reaction right out of the heat of the reaction and that heat of the reaction can be utilized in this cell and tube heat action now moving to the further this product stream is now then sent to the coolant or we can say sent to the absorber with the water so we are passing water and try to absorb this water in your product stream that is our no2 so in this converter we will convert our reactant to produce no2 gas and that no2 gas later will be absorbed in this water stream and at this step we will have dilute amount of the nitric acid that is around 9 to 10 percent but this is not the commercial grade of the nitric acid further treatment is also required so in order to do this we pass our product stream like this here you can see that we pass our product stream to the oxidation absorption tower in which we supply in which we supply further air to oxidize our no2 and it will convert into the concentrated hno3 that is your nitric acid and we will have around 57 to 60 percentage concentrated nitric acid and ultimately yield can be achieved is 93 to 96 percentage so with this type of the flow sheet or the process diagram we can achieve around 93 to 96 percentage of the yield now again in order to convert an no2 gas into the hno3 we have to pass water so we are continuously supplying cold water and extracting hot water right as this reaction is also exothermic reaction and to convert no NO2 gas into HNO3 or we can say nitric acid, we always require water. So we are passing water from this side. So this is what the entire process diagram that you need to remember for the production of the nitric acid. Now let me just quickly revise this entire flow sheet. We have started with the ammonia here and we have mixed this ammonia with the compressed air and pass it to the converter. This converter serves different purposes. This is basically shell and tube heat exchanger inside the tube we have packed our rhodium and platinum catalyst to enhance our reaction and as this reaction is very much exothermic so on the tube side we are passing our water which is then converted into the steam that this steam is then sent to the turbine section in order to rotate our compressor and we run our compressor with this steam then the product steam is then sent to the catalyst recovery section where we recover our precious catalyst of the platinum and then after steam economizer it is sent to the water absorption tower where we produces dilute amount of the nitric acid which is having 9 to 10 percentage of the conversion then further this product stream is then sent to the oxidation and absorption tower in which we supply water on a counter current manner to produce nitric acid out of the hno3 gas out of the no2 gas right so here you can see that we have produced nitric acid of the concentration having 57 percentage to the 60 percentage. Now having said that, let's just move to the process description of this process. As you can see that the compressed air is mixed with the ammonia and fed to the cell and tube converter which is designed to, which is designed so that the preheater and steam recovery boiler are, can be performed in the same reactor. So that I have already explained in the flow sheet that this reactor serve multi-purpose of the converter, superheater and heat recovery boiler as well. So let's just see the design of this converter. You can see here that oxidation of ammonia take place at around 800 degrees Celsius in the tube side of the cell and tube heat exchanger, which contains around 10 to 30 sheets of the platinum catalyst and it produces NO and water, right? So large amount of heat is also being evolved during this reaction as this reaction is very much exothermic reaction. So what we are using is we are utilizing that evolved heat and can be absorbed by the boiler feed water and converted into the steam. And then the steam is then passed to the superheater and it is directly sent to the turbine where it rotates the compressor and it produces compressed air that we have already seen in the flow sheet. Now the product stream contains around 10 to 12 percentage of the NO 
and is sent to the catalyst section that is catalyst recovery section to recover our precious catalyst of the platinum. Then it is passed through the steam economizer to further recover some amount of the heat. Then further this NO stream is cooled with the water and condensed and it is produced dilute HNO3 of concentration 9 to 10 percent. And then this cooled NO is sent to the oxidizer absorption system where air is again paid to convert NO into the NO2. And after this NO2 we absorbed it inside the water in order to produce a nitric acid, right? So here you can see that absorber is a packed or a sieve type tray tower in which cooling water is being circulated from the top and it produces around 57 to 60 percentage of the nitric acid. So this is what your process description that you can explain. That I have explained you with the flow sheet and with the process description as well. Now in the next video we will see the major engineering problem associated with this, pro this process. Till then keep watching, keep learning. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.